And we move on in the psalm. We see the third situation where we are reminded that God is our refuge. And that is in the post-battle fatigue. Post-battle fatigue. We see it in verses 8 through 11. You read them and you see these things. Verse 8 speaks of the desolation that has been caused by wars and weapons. And it invokes in me when I read these verses this image of a depressed soldier looking out over the burned wreckage of a battlefield. Even as in the distance, bombs are going off in a new battle. That's the image we get here. You know, in our lives, we are caught in battles. We are caught in the aftermath of battles we have fought. We are caught in the aftermath of battles we are fighting now. And we know that just over the horizon, there's another battle. And we say, you know, all my strength is gone. How can, how can I do this? Uh, my hope is gone. Uh, we're depressed and we're fatigued. And it's, it's, it's at this time that God comes to us, just like in verse 10, and he says to us, be still and know I am God. Be still. It means stop striving. Stop your relentless efforts to beat this world, to do it by yourself. It actually means relax. Relax and know that he is God. That's a problem for us. You know, know why stress so often gets the, the most of us? Because we don't cease. We don't stop. We are not still. We don't relax long enough to actually know, to experience God being our fortress. We don't know with confidence what he has promised us and what he does for us. We think, oh, God's our refuge and our strength. Oh, how good. I got it. Next. And that's our attitude. We read things like this. We don't want really to stop and ponder it. And you know what that means? That means it gets in our head. It's head knowledge. But when we're going through the aftermath of the stress and the trouble in our life, head knowledge isn't enough. No, we need to know. We need to know from seeking and from experience that God is our refuge. He is going to hold us up and He is going to be there for us. You know, in order for God to counteract the incredible toll all this stress and trouble brings into our lives, we must slow down and be still. That's hard. Think about it. When was the last time you drove under the speed limit? Or when was the last time you drove within 10 miles above the speed limit? Uh, when was the last time you took uh, a nice stroll through the woods? When was the last time you went to your kitchen and just made yourself a nice homemade treat for yourself? When was the last time you went and made something with your bare hands? When was the last time you, you, know, you, you, you took off your watch for a whole Saturday and didn't look at the time? When was the last time you enjoyed life so much that you couldn't stop smiling? And the answer to those questions for many of us is, I don't remember. I, I don't know. It's no wonder we are stressed. We don't know how to be still. We don't know how to be still and know God. We don't know how to relax and know God is being our refuge and our strength. The great thing about God being there is that He's always there. Verse 1 tells us God's help, it's ever-present. It means it's constant. It's always there. No matter what we are going with, God's there. So often we don't feel it. We don't know it. We don't sense it. Because we are not being still. We are not ceasing our own striving. We're trying to do it ourselves. We have to stop. But we don't like to stop, do we? We as humans, we are funny creatures. Uh, what do we do when we get lost? Well, we drive faster, don't we? Uh, it's like uh, when we get so stressed, we get all the trouble because the world's throwing all sorts of things at us. What do we do? Well, we start doing more so that we can try to keep up, so that we can get ahead of it. How long God is there whispering us, I'm God. I'll be victorious. I will be exalted. I'll do this for you. You know, God, he doesn't want our help. What he wants is for us to stop and be still and trust him. He wants us to trust him. We have trouble with that. You know, Chuck Swindoll, he tells a story uh, about how he and his wife Cynthia and their two little kids one evening, uh, one winter evening, they, they went into the, the city to go to a concert. And when they came out of the concert hall afterward, they discovered that four feet of snow had fallen when they were inside. And uh, the kids, the kids couldn't even stand in this snow. They, had, they were powerless against the snow. So Chuck and Cynthia each took a kid and they trudged through the deep snow to the whole next block over where they thought they parked their car. And they got there, it was like, all they could see was these, these mounds covered by snow. So they started digging through all the snow to try to find which car was theirs. They finally found the car, and they removed enough snow to open the, the car door. And then Chuck got his key out, and he went to put it in the lock, but the locks were frozen. And at this point, Chuck started to realize that his children, they were starting to get alarmed, because they were starting to freeze. 
and they couldn't do anything to protect themselves from the cold. They were completely relying on Chuck and his wife to get through with that car. And that's when Chuck writes, finally, we did get the car door open, and the kids tucked in the back seat. One of them looked at us and said, we love you, Daddy and Mama. Thanks. Chuck says, that's all he needed. That's all he needed, to know that his children, that they trusted in him to protect them, and that they appreciated that protection. They appreciated the fact that he was protecting them from things they were powerless to do on their own. You know, we are like those little swindle children. We are completely powerless sometimes against the things that come into our lives, the stress and this trouble. And, and that response to that little child was, Daddy, thank you. That's what God wants from us. That's what he expects from us. Realize we can't carry ourselves through the storms. We can't do it. Oh, we try. And that's why we're stressed. We're trying to do it all by our own power, our own strength. We want to be like steel. We want to be unshakable, unmovable in our own strength. Like Superman, we want to be the man or the woman of steel. But instead of steel, we need to be still. We need to stop and trust in God to be our refuge and strength. You know, if, if you're stressed today, it's time to stop and be still. And maybe it's time for you to go to God and thank Him. Do you ever think about doing that? Go to God and thank Him. Thank Him for always being there for you. Thank Him for being your strength. Thank Him for always protecting you. And tell Him it is, will be by His strength. Not your strength. But it's going to be by His strength that you are going to persevere. You will not be moved. You will not fear. You're going to stop striving. You're going to stop running. Instead, you're going to let that trouble and that stress draw you closer to God. Admit your weakness and tell him you need his strength. You know, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Let us pray.